So if you want to break a bad habit, there are kind of three potential paths you could take. So the first is you can eliminate it entirely. So elimination. Second option is you can reduce it. So you could like curtail it to the desired degree. I don't want to never drink caffeine. I just want to drink less of it. And the third option is you could substitute it. You could replace it with a different habit. And of those three, oftentimes replacing it is actually the more effective option. So for example, if you get your caffeine from drinking Coke or soda or something like that, then maybe you find out, hey, you know, something I really love from this experience is I actually just like drinking a carbonated beverage. And so it's the carbonation that I like. And maybe if I substitute it with sparkling water or something like that, I still get the carbonation sensation, but I don't have the caffeine associated with it anymore. And so that's a way of substituting for that behavior. And you still get something that the experience provides. This is actually kind of an important, just like larger picture, big picture thing about habits, which is every habit that you have, we build habits to solve the repeated problems that we face in life. And I'm using problems in a very general sense here. You know, like, let's say that you come home from work and you feel tired and exhausted from a long day. Well, in a sense, coming home from work at 6 p.m. and feeling tired is a problem. And especially if you experience it repeatedly, you got to come up with some kind of solution for that. And generally speaking, we just kind of like try things out in life. And so you can imagine one person solves the problem of feeling exhausted by scrolling Instagram mindlessly for 30 minutes. And another person solves that problem by playing video games for an hour. And a third person solves it by going for a run for, you know, 20 minutes. And those are all solutions to the same kind of underlying problem. But some of them are more healthy or more productive or service better than others. And what do you think the odds are that the solutions you've come up with to the repeated problems in your life are the optimal one. Like, it's just so unlikely that whatever you happen to have stumbled into throughout life is the perfect way or the best habit that serves you most. So I think what I'm trying to get out there is maybe take a little bit of the pressure off yourself and don't worry about judging yourself so much. You're just trying to solve the repeated problems that you face. But once you realize that it's unlikely that your current solutions are the optimal solutions, Well, now maybe we can step outside and above ourselves and look down and try to come up with a better solution. So rather than drinking a Coke to get the carbonation, we can drink sparkling water. So that's one example for the substitution. If we want to take the other path of reduction, something I've noticed about myself is uh, if I get a six pack of beer and I put it in the, the front of the fridge, like in the door or on a shelf that's like right at eye level, I'll drink one every night just because it's there. But if I take it and put it on the lowest shelf in the fridge and like, it's kind of all the way back in the corner, I can't really see it unless I'm bending down. It'll sit there for two weeks or three weeks. Like, and so I'm like, did I want it or not? You know, like (laughs) if it was obvious, then I grab one, but if it wasn't, then I avoid it. And I think that's a simple question to ask yourself. Where do I get my caffeine? Is it coffee? Is it soda? And is that really obvious? Is it like the coffee sitting right out on the counter is the, the soda, like the first thing I see at eye level when I open the fridge and how can I make it less obvious in atomic habits? There are kind of what I call the four laws of behavior change. And it's just this big picture view of how to build a good habit. And so if you want to build a good habit, you want to make your habits obvious, attractive, easy, and satisfying. And if you want to break a bad habit, you just do the opposite of those four. So you want to make it invisible, make it unattractive, make it difficult and make it unsatisfying. And so I think, how can you make coffee or soda invisible? How can you make it difficult to drink, like keep it outside of the house, et cetera? So there are a variety of strategies you could use here. You know, like, let's say you live with a family and other people are going to want to drink it, but you don't want to. Well, there's a, there's this little kind of diabolical Tupperware container called the kitchen safe. And oh, yeah. it has a, a lock box code on the top of it. And so you could give the other family members the lockbox code, but then they don't give it to you and you just put the soda inside of that. And so it stays in that Tupperware and you can't access it. So finding ways to increase friction or to make it difficult or to make it less obvious, those are all ways to potentially curtail the, the caffeine habit.